A Brooklyn Park man struck and killed by a vehicle near his driveway is being remembered as a gentle soul who loved nature and loved life. Paul Pfeiffer was struck by an SUV Saturday evening. Reporter Sonia Goins caught up with the family who say they're devastated by what happened. A growing memorial marks the spot where Paul Pfeiffer was hit Saturday evening. His family says he was on his way to get the mail when the unthinkable happened. He was walking to the mailbox down there. 65-year-old Paul Pfeiffer was hit around 1030 near his home and later died at the hospital. Tire marks are still visible where the SUV went up on the sidewalk. According to Brooklyn Park Police, the man behind the wheel is Pfeiffer's neighbor. Our investigation at this point has uh, determined that we believe this is an intentional act. Police are trying to determine a motive. There are rumors spreading that this is a hate crime because Pfeiffer is gay. However, police say at this time, there isn't any evidence of this being a hate crime. There is a significant history of mental illness with the suspect. Um, and it is much more likely that uh, the reason for the incident is related to his mental illness. Pfeiffer leaves behind his husband, Joseph, and lots of family and friends who are mourning his death. He was such an integral part of the family that to lose him is such a huge loss. Nancy Violante is Pfeiffer's sister-in-law and says he was an overall good guy who gave the best hugs. Paul was kind gentle, enormously talented, always fun. Pfeiffer was also a musician who played the piano and performed in musicals. His song will continue to play in hearts of the people who loved him. We all loved him so much. He was everybody's favorite. Sonia Goins, CCX News. The driver who struck Pfeiffer, a 46-year-old Brooklyn Park man, is currently in the Hennepin County Jail, facing possible criminal vehicular homicide charges. Minnesota court records show no previous convictions against him. It was a deadly weekend in Minnesota bodies of water as people sought ways to cool off. Among the victims, a Plymouth man who died at a state park. The incident happened Saturday in the St. Croix River at William O'Brien State Park. According to the Washington Sheriff's Office, 46-year-old Chandra Mohan Lagubaram was swimming with family when he went under. He was among two people who died in separate drowning incidents. A third case involved a rescue of a child who was found unresponsive and was airlifted to a Minneapolis hospital. Lawmakers returned to the state capitol for a special session on Monday. A budget for the next two years needs to get done by July 1st to avoid a government shutdown. House Speaker Melissa Hortman of Brooklyn Park calls the passage of a public safety bill her number one priority, which includes police accountability measures and funding for violence prevention programs. What we need to do a better job of is um, making sure that we have resources to prevent violence before it occurs, and to not have officers with lethal force responding to incidents that don't require lethal force. Hortman says she expects the public safety bill to be the last bill to come together, calling it, quote, challenging on both the finance and policy sides. She also says lawmakers are close on an education funding bill, while a bonding bill, which would fund infrastructure projects around the state, is in the early stages. Hortman expects the special session to last seven to ten days. Drivers in New Hope be ready for a detour on one of the city's main north-south thoroughfares. The city and Canadian Pacific Railway started repairing a railroad crossing on Boone Avenue between 51st Avenue North and Science Center Drive on Monday morning. The project is expected to last two to three weeks. The road will be closed to through traffic and there will be a complete closure of the railroad crossing. Drivers should follow signs for the detour. This next story is a perfect example of how even some of the youngest students can continue to amaze us. I got the chance to meet a young student named Khalid Bakari who wrote and published his own book at the age of nine. On the last day of school at Northport Elementary, Khalid Bakari has something else special to smile about. He's finishing up third grade and he also just finished up his first book. I wrote about a family that had many adventures and learned from many lessons. But it's not subject matter you might expect from a nine-year-old. Khalid wrote about the Benson family. The parents in the book died, and the kids had to learn some hard lessons that Khalid sums up this way. Whatever you're going to do next, 
next to make you feel brave. Khalid hopes this is just the beginning of his career as a writer, creating stories with a special message. Stories that are interesting and about being brave, like this one. He dedicated his book to his family and to the teacher who helped him publish. It says, to Miss Growth, um, she who helped me. He was like, this is growth, look at what I'm writing. And so he showed it to me, I was like, oh my, and I, it was like pages, you know? And so I was like, this is amazing. And I said, do you want any, you know, help, you know, from me with it? And he was, and his eyes got big and he was like, I would love it. Jamie Growth helped him craft his story for 20 minutes a day, two times a week over the last five weeks of school. She says this type of story from a third grader is unique. He's nine, right? I mean, the fact that he on his own just started writing and took the time, you know, to reach out to me and get help. And he said from the very beginning, can we add pictures? Can we actually make this a book? Together, they worked to format it and to choose pictures, creating a book that will live on at the school. Khalid hopes it inspires other students, too. And also be brave and think about things on and on until you make a perfect book. And here's a fun fact about the book. Khalid worked in a few of his friends' names into the characters. We'll be right back. The Hopkins softball team qualified for the state tournament for the first time since 2015. One big reason for the royal success is the talent and leadership of the team's junior catcher. Here's this week, CCX Sports Spotlight. She is one of Minnesota's top prep softball players. And Hopkins junior Lauren Granger is having fun with her high school teammates. I'm so excited to be able to say that we are doing this and we're going to state and representing Hopkins because like, it is the best place to be. It's the best environment with the best people, and I'm just excited to show people that. Granger is hitting 455 of the Royals with 12 home runs and 30 runs batted in in 24 games, and an OPS of over 1,500. Ooh, and that one is slugged down the left field. Lauren's been just a great kid and a great leader for us. Uh, she, she's always enthusiastic. She's always into the game. She knows what she can do, and she handles her um, ability very, very well. She's very mature for the way she does things. Um, she's all about her team and her teammates and doing things, but then has the physical ability to, to change a game. As an eighth grader in 2018, Lauren was already the Royals varsity starting catcher. She had the chance to play alongside Natalie Den Hartog that spring, an All-State player at Hopkins, and now an All-American at the University of Minnesota. Granger said she learned a lot about hitting just by watching Den Hartog. Just her being there, like I wanted to be her. Like <laughs> when she would go up and hit, like I would watch and she was always like so focused and like knew what she was doing all the time. And like she went up with intent that she was going to hit the ball hard every time. A catcher since age eight, Lauren has worked tirelessly on her game, both with high school and summer ball teammates, and has also put in countless hours catching for friends and hitting with her dad. Me and my dad just about every day go out to the field at Big Willow and we hit, and my mom goes and checks for me, and we have line drive competitions, and um, I have some friends all around that are pitchers, so I go and I catch for them. Lauren plays in the offseason with the Minnesota Renegades. But from ages 11 to 15, she played for the South Dakota Renegades, traveling to our neighboring state to play ball. It was crazy. I would have days where we would wake up at 4, get to practice by 8 a.m., practice till 4 p.m., and then drive home that night, and then do the same thing the next weekend. It was, it was crazy, and it was tiring, but it was also awesome, and it was the best training I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Her club coach back then, Mike Mock is now the head women's softball coach at West Texas A&M University. It's a program that just won the Division II National Championship and where Lauren has committed to for college. It's so beautiful. It's like this small town, but it's like a big college. Like it's, it's super cool and the weather's awesome and the people are great. The softball field is 
amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. Happy-go-lucky and gregarious when you meet her, Lauren admits between the lines she can be a different person. You can be a pit bull. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I get a little <laughs> upset. She does smile a lot, and, and she's very upbeat. But when she gets into it, she gets very aggressive and, and really goes after things. And that's the thing. Her at bats, she never gets cheated in a bat. And uh, she, you always have a feeling that something's going to happen when she comes to the plate. I am probably the most competitive person, you know. Like, um, I love to win. I hate to lose. I hate to let people beat me. And I hate when people outwork me. Hopkins meets Centennial in the state softball quarterfinals Tuesday morning at Caswell Park in North Mankato. After playing with the Minnesota Bombers last summer, Lauren will play summer ball with the Minnesota Renegades this year. For the CCX Sports Spotlight, I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.